Hello, 8th graders. In this video, we're covering both lessons 9 and 10. Lesson 9 is called the converse. And no, we're not referring to the shoes. Um, it's a way to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out if a triangle is a right triangle. So same thing, same Pythagorean theorem, just using it in a different way. Here we go. Okay, notice here that we have skipped ahead to activity 3. Here we go. Here we have two triangles. They tell us that they are right triangles. They don't have the right angles in them. In our first triangle, the right angle is right there. In the second triangle, it's right there. Um, go ahead and solve for A. Figure out the length of A and start again when you're ready. To solve for A, which is a leg, not the hypotenuse, I wrote out my Pythagorean theorem. I filled in what I knew. I didn't know A, the leg. I knew B and C. And I kept solving this through, subtracted 4 from each side. I got a squared equals 45. So then I know that just a equals the square root of 45. And it does tell me to do it to the nearest tenth. So I'm saying that a is going to be approximately 6.7 units long. Now this next problem is really unique because there's two sides that we don't know. But really they're both x, so those both, both of those lengths are the same. So I'm still going to use the Pythagorean theorem because it is a right triangle. Um, x is a leg on both of those, so I'm going to fill in what I know. a and b are both x, and the hypotenuse is 4. And here I have an equation that I can simplify. I have x squared plus x squared. That can simplify. Those are like terms. So that's 2x squared, and 4 squared is 16. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2. This is something you have not seen yet with Pythagorean theorem, so this is a little bit different. So I end up with x squared equals 8. And I know that then just x is going to be the square root of 8. And to the nearest tenth, that means that x is going to be approximately 2.8. So again, the main thing in this lesson is just deciding, is this a right triangle? So if you're given a triangle, is it a right triangle, and how do you know? In your lesson synthesis, you have this triangle, so please be looking there and write down this work. Um, if it's a right triangle, we're going to think that this angle right here is possibly the right angle. And so if I label my sides, I would have A, B, and C. And basically what I'm looking for here is, does the Pythagorean work for this triangle? If it works, then yeah, it's a right triangle. If it doesn't work, then no, it's not a right triangle. And so I fill in what I know with my A, B, and C, and then I simplify, and I get those numbers. 8 squared is 64, 15 squared is 225, and 17 squared is 289. And then I simplify on the left-hand side, 64 plus 225 is 289. And I end up with something that works, right? And since it works, since it makes it true, then yes, this is a right triangle. If I had gotten numbers here that were not the same, then I would know that no, it is not a right triangle. Okay, now we're on to lesson 10, applications of the Pythagorean theorem. So where can this be used in real life? Um, we are going to be doing some problems here that are not in your book, so make sure that you have some space that you can draw or use some extra paper for some of these problems. Here we go. We are going to do activity 1 here, and you are estimating square roots, and you're figuring out which estimate is closest to the actual value of the expression. So for example, the square root of 24, is it closer to 4, 4.5, or 5. Now I know that the square root of 25 is 5, so the square root of 24 is just going to be less than that. And so I'm going to guess that it's closest to 4.5. Also, right here, I know that the square root of 16 is 4, so I know that it's not that. Go ahead and try the other three and start again when you're ready. For the rest of these, the square root of 7 is going to be closest to 2.5 in these choices. The square root of 42 is going to be closest to 6.5. And the last one, the square root of 10 plus the square root of 97 is going to be closest to 13. And what's happening here is that the square root of 10 is just a little bit over 3, let's say like 3.1. And um, the square root of 97 is a little bit less than 10, so let's say like 9.8. Um, that's going to be something closest to 13. And again, we're estimating on all of these, so none of them are exact. Okay, here's a problem that is not in your book, um, but these are some really good problems we've used in the past for Pythagorean theorem. I like them better than the ones in your book. So go ahead and draw these out in your book or on another sheet of paper. 
Um, we have a problem here called how tall was the tree? And you are five feet, six inches tall, and you estimate yourself to be half the height of the trunk that is still standing. So if you're five and a half feet tall, this distance is going to be 11 feet tall. And the distance along the ground from the trunk from the trunk to the top of the tree is 53 feet. So that's way over there. And now we know that a trunk of a tree and the ground is gonna make a right angle. So there we go. So if you can see, you have a right angle or a right triangle forming here. And again, it's not perfect because it's real life, but this is gonna give us a good idea of how tall the tree was. Go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the hypotenuse um, of the tree and we'll go from there. Okay, I've completed it um, this far, 53 squared plus 11 squared, those are the legs, equals c squared. If I keep simplifying, I have 2,930 equals c squared, and so I know that just c is gonna equal the square root of 2,930, which is going to be approximately 54.1 feet. So that is this side of the tree right here. 50, oops, 54.1 feet. Now, we also have to think about that this tree was standing and we had this other 11 feet. So to finish this out, I would take that 54.1, I'm gonna add it to that 11, and I get 65.1 feet for the height of the tree. Okay, here's another problem that we're gonna work on. Again, be drawing these in your book or on another piece of paper. Um, can the tray get thrown away? So I have a McDonald's tray here, McDonald's garbage can, can you actually throw these away? Now, when I made this problem, I actually looked these things up. The trash can opening is rectangular and measures seven inches by nine inches. So that's this right here, seven inches by nine inches. The trays are rectangular and measure 12 inches by 16 inches. Your friend says it's impossible to throw a, away a tray. So we have to decide, can we do it or not? Um, I want you to work on this on your own for a little bit and then start the video again when you're ready. Here's a hint though. If I was really going to try to throw a tray away, I may put that tray in diagonally to see if it fits. Okay, here's what we've done so far. I'm going to figure out what the hypotenuse is here across the garbage can. So I drew my triangle, labeled it ABC, um, filled in what I knew. My legs were 9 and 7. So I have 81 plus 49 equals c squared. That's 130 equals c squared. So I know that c is gonna be the square root of 130, which is approximately 11.4. So we're going this way. It's 11.4 inches. My tray, the smallest part of my tray is 12 inches. So no, it is not going to fit into the garbage can. If you notice, it's a really close fit. Seems like it was purposely designed that way so trays don't get thrown away.